we're back, ladies and gents, and this time you actually get to see our lovely faces here at the casting desk as well. It's Dying Tipana man. and Kips as our duo for uh, for this one. Inter just took Radiant the first man. game uh, from Unknown in a very convincing manner. And I feel like this DPC, no matter what region you're watching, a lot of 2 O's have been on the board and wow, very one-sided maps as well. I feel like, when do we start to see like the tight matches? Or has there been any tight matches in SA so far? Because uh, Interitus here looking really good. We've had some very tight matches, um, especially with uh, Balrogs earlier squeezing past to pick. Uh, Team Our Way, which is both of the... Uh, the the qualified teams, hurry, uh, hurry. actually the second qualified team beating the first qualified team, that was an absolute nail-biter. Mm -hmm. um, team pick. And I think in general, a bunch of the heavier matches of the season, of the teams that are expected to do well, are backloaded to make sure that there's always still something to play for. Weaver. So that, that might be one of the reasons why we see some of the more clean 2-0s at the start of the season. Unknown team. Sniping away that Weaver and Interitus answering with a completely different setup. Oh, Beastmaster. Solid speed with the draft, I have to say. This has been insta picking into an insta pick. So uh, you're kind of going with the Weaver, which is one of the more common or most wanted uh, first picks you can go for. If it's not banned in the draft, uh, it's either banned by the opposition who doesn't get to get first pick. So when they left it through, Unknown will grab it get themselves some lane pressure, open up the lanes, and after the lanes, most importantly, active Radio active man. map control... Uh, yeah. How do you call it? Cont contesting, I guess you could put it that way. And mm -hmm. you have this Mars Rubik, which I do like as a combo, and you have Beastmaster that just instantly gets picked into this, so... Unknown is looking to go full physical damage, but you want to have a mix of magical in it, but with Weaver and Beastmaster, you just want to go all in and force Interitus to go like, you build your armor items, we're gonna hit your buildings, we're gonna <laughs> hit your heroes, we're literally gonna hit you with all the physical damage we have to give. Just punch him. And this Beastmaster is oh, actually one of the seconds. heroes that I didn't expect to see it, but it is very much a, uh, a Banjaz no-name uh, signature hero. It is by far his best. So I like that they have just gone down to their roots, they say, all right, fine, that previous game was a wash, uh, and we were picking meta stuff. Let's just pick what suits us and see if that gets us a better game. I'm very curious, because I do feel that Benjas didn't have a, a great game to show off what he's capable mm -hmm. of previous time, and now this this is his hero. Now with... Uh, this has been one of the fastest yeah, drafts, too. Picking. Like The second phase is already completed. Um... Insta picks into insta bans. Well, we haven't really actually talked about it. The Enchantress, that's a no brainer against the Beastmaster. You don't get to steal mm -hmm. my boars. Um, I actually, out, out of the Enchantress, I have to tell you um, another. I, mean, you, I don't really want to bring out pub experiences, <laughs> but I do have to say Five one of the most horrendous hurry, hurry. pub experiences I've ever had was playing Enigma against Enchantress. My 260 HP Adelons versus a 700 oh, HP no. Adelon. Who the frick came up with that? Like, how is that even possible? I was raging at my screen like, that's not balanced. That's not cool. I didn't get to see it doesn't multiply as well with like triple 700 HP Adelons because those guys are like, you put three battering rams like at you. Like, what's going on with that? So you don't want to give that Enchantress boar the same thing, the same treatment. A lot of HP, a lot of damage. And, you know, just you're just going to scream for help. Ooh, you were talking about physical damage. Here she is. Yeah, With it's all it's all so physical. You can you can smell from a mile away. We're buffing up into a potential for protect one, but with a mix of auras and buffs. We've got attack speed. We've got oh, more attack seconds. speed. We have minus armor. We have a bulky guy who benefits from all of this Five the further the game goes. Remain. So this also brings out the Medusa into what a more active mid game here already at this point with all the buffs she has. Hopefully, yes, because the big downfall of physical damage for as like a strat for your entire lineup is that it is single target. And that means that for the early to mid game, okay, that's a signature right there. I'm still going to continue. For okay. the early to mid game, <laughs> you have this, um, this lineup where you need to be shot calling to take people down one by one with your physical damage. Whereas the magic damage will all be AoE and will be much easier to execute. So... 
I would like to see them pick up like a, a specific Hurry. physical Hurry. burst damage hero here. Unfortunately, the TA has already been taken out. But she's one of the best candidates to help physical damage lineups through sort of over that hump of the mid game because she makes a shot calling easy. It's like, all right, this guy first because I'm jumping him and then the next and then the next and then the next. If you can't do that, then you are, are in trouble with physical damage lineups. And now for that sniper. <laughs> that sniper. He is that so sniper. small next to that tree and protector. Yeah. And I, I was forewarned here because uh, FCR is apparently an Arc Warden player. Uh, and, and right. Timber saw as well, but this sniper um, is is a feared signature where Five people uh, hurry, sometimes hurry. say, right, you gotta you gotta ban the quack quack, mm. you gotta you gotta you gotta ban the whack whack before he picks it. So with the Medusa on the board, that's basically an excuse to pick that sniper. Yeah, it's definitely lining up pretty nicely. They've got a lot of frontline protection for the sniper and unknown. They okay. They have a weaver who could jump the back line, but you don't jump the sniper on a weaver. You're just gonna get bashed in the face. You're gonna quack quack. This is gonna be the only thing that you're gonna be hearing, and that times like uh, exponentially three with the with the speed of it. But yep. I agree. Um, the sniper does bring out that required damage. Lines up nicely with the treant and the and the Mars, especially the uh, the Mars Arena too, because uh, projectiles on your Radio allies go through. Pick. Medusas get blocked though, mm -hmm. so Medusa can't help her, her teammates if Mars is ulting every everybody else except the Medusa. Medusa can help with the stone gaze, but Sniper's gonna have a free free time. Just you know. Sit back, take a, take a nice position in your chair, right click pick. once, put your hands behind your back and just, you know, enjoy the ride. Five seconds. Hurry, Pretty much, hurry. yeah, you, you just pointed out is exactly why I don't like this Medusa pick here, because this Mars Rubik already pretty much neuters her and it goes on for quite a long time. Rubik takes away your, your base damage. It's... She's going to be building stats. I guess I guess statsless Medusa then, but you're you're never going to get rid of the Mars problem anyway, because he's just going to read. He's going to turn his bulwark on and redirect most of your shots towards him. Who's going to jump this sniper? Nobody. Yeah, it's like you you're kind of need to build a blink on this Beastmaster, but you also want to build Overlord for the push, the auras. Mm -hmm. Ember uh, kind of does the trick. Yeah, okay. Ember kind of does the trick here. Plus, he can evade some of those sniper right clicks too with his uh, with his jumps, with his slate of fist. Um, and he's able to move out of the Mars arena. Only downside is he can't get out of the overgrowth. Oh, There's wait, nothing that seconds. saves you from the overgrowth except if you itemize against it. Uh, Five to be, BKB remain. most likely is the, the item pickup that comes to mind here for this Ember Spirit. Um, he would like to go for stuff like Aghanims at least. You need a potential damage dealing item like Maelstrom, for example. Something to farm with if you're not uh, going to prioritize your whole early game into farming the jungle before Medusa takes over. Agreed. This this defensive itemization is going to be a thorn in his side because he's basically his team's only magical damage. A, you can get lucky on the Ogre, of course. Mm. Um, but... In the end, this this is their magic burst for the mid game. This Ember needs to have a good game, and I gotta say, in order for the Ember to have a good game, there needs to be some space. We saw Unknown have big trouble taking down the single tower in that previous game. The Beastmaster needs to be able to pressure out whoever is going to be on the safe lane. It might not even end up being the sniper. I'm pretty sure Rayor could take this as well, um, and then probably also take the mid in order for Unknown to. Yeah. Storm get the space for all these cores. The I was actually storm. laughing at the thought here that they should put Ember Spirit as a four and put Ogre into mid and have even more early game uh, fighting potential. But they will put the Ogre as a support. They'll put the Ember Spirit into mid in the end. They, this I might be impacted by the old Thunder Predator with, uh, with Matthew and his pause for Ember Spirit. Hmm. Those were the days. Those were the days. That, that was a good last year. I remember our NA and SA casts we had last year. There was a lot of fun stuff going with drafts. And the Ember 4 was the one that I really enjoyed the most. I can remember Hiko doing a bunch of that as well. Hiko would really like all of these strange heroes to work at. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
He is not in this game though, uh, and the strange hero that we have instead is the sniper. And the Pepper Spirit does definitely present a threat to this sniper. This guy is fragile, he has no defense mechanisms, he has no good ways to take the flame guard off, uh, and, and no HP, which the flame guard will be taking off of him. <laughs> hmm. Well, there's always that. Um... What about drafts, though? Is this a better one from Unknown? Because now we're still very, very one-sided with the, the way they're going to execute. What's their main goal? What's their timing? What's their window? But it's definitely it is... better than the previous. It is better than the previous. At the very least, there's clarity here, right? The problem is that all of these eggs are in the Medusa basket, and she's already countered. You're, you're picking a Medusa into Mars Rubik. Um, and then you got a sniper on top as well. She needs to have so much damage. She needs to be so big that it, it seems unrealistic to me that she's going to pull that off. But it is possible. It is possible. And I think we, with, with uh, the eggs in the same basket, I think we had that in game one too, where we were kind of like relying and trusting on the gyrocopter. Mm -hmm. But the dyna dynamic changed a lot with the course of what happened after the laning stage. So we've already stated the importance of how these lanes need to go. Now it's a bit different because, you know, the, the heroes are different, the matchups are completely different, and the way that uh, you're looking at it from both teams' perspective, like they know the Medusa has to be hunted down on the map. It's not like you're going to hunt around on the gyrocopter. It's like, it's a good kill, but it's not necessarily going to win us the game if we hunt this medusa down that's instantly like a, oh that's their public enemy number one mm -hmm. uh, she's very slow she's easy to catch but unknown has playmaking potential this time around between this beastmaster and the vision that he's going to provide and the mobility and damage of the ember they can make plays even if they get behind and that is an option that they definitely did not have the previous time um i am also not as convinced by the storm spirit pick i we haven't really talked about it yet there's definitely farm wise a lot of space for it on Interitus, but Storm Spirit into Ember. You're going to out farm him, but the Ember will always remain a threat because the root of the uh, of the bolas, the searing change, is very much yeah. deadly to you. <laughs> and I think we've seen this routine happen quite a lot. Uh, the lane against the tree and protector is going to lead into a lot of trees being cut down. So mm -hmm. that the strength protector doesn't have much roaming capability. And the sniper is actually the one here uh, cutting the majority of it. So do we actually put the tree and protector in the bottom? I mean, there's still a decent amount no, of trees remaining here. So sniper could just uh, get them up. Unknown is able to bring at least three bounty runes, though. So uh, good start for them. It's a bit of a change from game number one. So if we're following a, a script here, uh, three bounties mm -hmm. leads into a one game. They got it. Bag him and tag him. Bag him and tag him. Trans sniper safe lane. When's the last time I've seen this? Oh, ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Yeah, I just got uh, you know, I just got the shivers. Sorry, chat, but I had to do it. Yep. And Jez. A couple of hits there from uh, the train protector and the sniper. Yeah, and they have Where to immediately. Yep, they have to immediately lay into this beastmaster. His level one is extremely weak, and with the the sniper and the trend, most of their harass being physical, you gotta push him as hard as you can before he gets the helm of iron will up, which he is going to be rushing. After he gets that armor, he's going to have a lot more sustain in this lane. Wondering what's the main goal of this lane here for the Weaver, especially wants to pick up level three. I think the Beastmaster wants to do the same. So until then, I feel like uh, D Flash is going to have to do, uh, you know, a lot of heavy lifting in this lane. He's going to have to pull the lane every now and then, maybe even push it straight under the tower uh, while he gets to trade against heroes. Like hitting this Weaver has got to be Dream, Dream Protector's best job he's ever signed up for. Yep, anytime you get him, he just loses a quarter of his HP. I might yep. be exaggerating a little bit, but only a little a bit. A little bit, yeah, but it's kind of like Starship, Troop Star yeah, Starship Troopers with uh, a good, the only good bug is a dead bug. True. That's a great movie, by the way. 
I've never seen it, but I. I oh, you haven't it. seen it? Oh man. No. It's it's well, a Verhoeven, isn't it? Like it's even Dutch cultural heritage, and I'm not. Yeah. I, I haven't. It's a, it's a late '90s movie. Uh, you can, I, it, yeah, the whole movie is actually on YouTube. So uh, if you're in for a ah, couple giggles, just go for it. I see. Well, I'd 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 never download a car, but you know. <laughs> download a car. <laughs> okay, you caught me off guard with that one. That was a good one. Argus uh, with Medusa is gonna have a pretty have pretty fun time with this lane. I think Mars is of course gonna be annoying, but Ogre's doing Ogre things, so makes this lane a whole lot easier for this Medusa to be in. So if they can keep this up, potentially we even maybe even the Weaver gets a couple stacks in on that top half. Medusa's gonna get the great start for the game, get those items fast. You've got Bloodlust You're also gonna be getting from the Ogre Mage, Ogre Magi, Ogre Magi. This lane is definitely going to turn up once the Medusa, yeah, she just hit her level 3 just now. And now it's getting harder for the Mars to just stay in trade, because he's going to be getting hit with that Mystic Snake yeah, every he, couple of seconds. And you can see that early point in the Bulwark too, so he's got some kind of uh, reduction for all these right clicks that he's constantly tanking. But uh, already down to 120 HP, feeling is a bit too far away. Almost gets the connection from the snake from the Rubik to bounce onto the Mars. That might have potentially led into a kill. Or at least very close to it, at least. There's a south being used. Region running out. Ten stick charges on the Rubik. Now Rubik's on the run. Ogres found another target to prioritize. Snake's also on their way. And this should be first blood, potentially. Pipolo, very far used up. Couple missed right clicks on the low ground. And Rubik walks out with his life still intact. Uh, that's a uh, that's a painful point to lose that much HP on the Rubik because you'd really want here because you also had the level three on the Mars. You'd ideally want to get a kill, but as I'm saying that, he does have that point in the bulwark. That's a lot of damage missing. I don't think they actually can go for this Medusa anymore. She's pretty safe in this lane now. Yeah, missing a point in your damage dealing to reduce damage being dealt onto you, so that automatically deducts a little bit from the, the capabilities here of Hijack. You look at that slow moonwalk back out from that lane. He's now picked up a Helm of Iron Will, so Mars has got a lot of armor to work with. Sadly, that snake still punches through. And look at that! Oh, what a powerful snake takes a bite off of Hijack. He's down to 20 HP, and he walks out. But he's going to have to TP all the way back home. And Medusa is living the life right now. And this is good for Unknown. She is so happy right now. And the fact that she is having that good of a lane and Rubik had to eat her. Oh, go on mid. Yep, look at you're? that. Bug still chewing on the Storm Spirit. But uh, Storm's going to be fine with that. Good attempt on the Ember. But it <laughs> ends up being a 1v2. So, going to be careful with those. No bottle yep, refill. No, he already got that just now. The Rubik already TP'd in, so they had to do the bottle refill in order to get this opportunity at all. And it has unfortunately been missed. Yep. Kind of like, next support, please. <laughs> Line up the queue from the fountain. Uh, but I don't think the Triant has been sent back to base even once. He's had a pretty great lane up top here, and his sniper is yes. currently topping the CS chart. He is completely unbothered. Both safe lanes are enjoying their game so far, yeah. Um... But we did t mention about this Beastmaster ramping up in potential with this uh, kill, po well, this kill potential both, but also the damage he's able to deal onto the sniper in this lane if he picks up a couple levels. So it might change in a few minutes. However, something that also does change in a few minutes is uh, Storm Spirit's life being taken away. That's a kill for Black Soul. And Moonlight being assisting there. DD Rune Weaver making his way towards the top lane. And Geminate attack with the DD Rune. Mm -hmm. uh, Sniper quickly finding out that he can't trade for his death support, but yeah, there, there it was. The, the Storm Spirit, if you get found by the Ember, you usually die. It takes too many remnants to take off the Flame Guard after, uh, I mean, I want to say recent buffs. It's been a while. But yeah, it's like a very grim life where you just have to admit, like, yeah, you're just gonna die. <laughs> so, Moonlight, however, founds an FCR, and can he get this kill in time? The DD rune runs out as well. The bug is still chewing on the sniper, and it's gonna be worth it in the end because uh, they've got the swarm still on the flash, and Rayor gets a kill on feeling. 
Triant gets away. Even with minus nine armor on the Triant Protector, but the, the help of the living armor is gonna at least add into a little bit into that. So uh, kills happening all over the map. Two to two on the on, on the scoreboard now. And none of them anywhere near the Medusa. She is... well, this is the right start. They're not out of the woods, but this is definitely the start of the game that you need if you want to play up against yeah. all of this. I agree. It's going in the right direction, at least. If they can just keep the course, make sure that they have a captain and a helm. Characters love their voice lines, man. Go my god, support. what is it with the my god lines? <laughs> Get the support packs. I feel like the SA should have some pretty, pretty, uh, pretty solid ones. They have some amazing voice lines. Okay, you to look at that. It's a easy, easy arcane for the Ember Spirit. Very and important to take it away from the storm. Yeah, surprisingly enough, Unknown right now is letting this Marge, who's had a pretty rough time of it, uh, not only recover and let his get his level 6 uncontested, but he is also soloing his bottom tower right now. And Triant is being Still hunted right top. now in the trees. Yep, they're uh, chasing all the way, almost to the tier 2 trees. Push that Triant Protector away so that he's not able to protect the tower. And uh, that's going to be a tier 1 tower taken by Unknown. And I think we're in the similar situation where we were with Interitus in game number one. They could still defend this bottom tier with tower. And they've got the TPs for it. They do. They don't have the big tank at the ready, though, unless they would really like to offer up feeling here. He's certainly cool with it. That could be level five for him. A level six if yeah. uh, nobody on Interitus dives in. Uh, but the Ogre <laughs> soaks some XP. Meanwhile, Gang Squad is making their way towards bottom. Uh, they did actually scout their movements. They have an OBS ward right next to the outpost, so even more uh, provided extra vision. So Orgre's out. Gonna leave this tower for dead. Meanwhile, unknown. Well, uh, I love the I love the fact that you're now placing OBS wards right Dyer's under the outpost to get this attacked. extended vision. Very powerful, and it has just been dewarded in the Dire Jungle, yeah, yeah, unfortunately. So that also does tell that uh, Unknown they have been scouting out the churches with their warning plays. Trent wants to get his ulti off, but he does not drop the base. And the crowd is left booing at this point, so the tower's dead, the Treant's dead. Unknown are 3k head. Feeling good? And so far, they're exactly riding that line that they have to, where this Beastmaster He's got his dominators, pushed his towers, created that space for the Ember to work in. Ember's getting very close to his Maelstrom, which is going to really amp up his damage and make him a true threat to, honestly, everybody, everybody. over on the side of Interitus. Yeah. Triant making the slow walk all the way back from base towards this uh, mid lane, most likely. Looking at the Storm Spirit very far away from picking up an Orchid. But uh, Mars wants to spoke up, nevertheless. They don't have any playmaking items here at 10 minutes. So this does look more like a Storm Spirit jump with Vortex with uh, Mars following up with Spear. Okay, let's take the Ogre. Yeah, yeah, he's got the arena. Okay, so they'll be happy with that. I feel like the arena was a bit of an overkill, but a kill is a kill nevertheless, so... Yeah, and at this point, chances. if you if you don't use it, it gets rusty, right? Like it's already eleven minutes. Rusty arena. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, all those shield walls and stuff. Right, right. Yeah, I was just trying to picture Colosseum in my mind. It's still standing, but true. Yeah, I guess. Uh, wanna <laughs> what? Un unless you're practicing for architect school and just want to keep on building. Pretty calm start outside of that. A uh, bit of farming going on here and there. They're like unknown. They're prioritizing with farm. Bit of lane push with the help of their uh, Beastmaster. Vlad soon up. And with that Overlord, I think that's the timing when Unknown really starts to push the throttle. They're looking for this uh, Rubik, but Rubik is hard to catch with that Shikuchi. 
can even see the Mars in the top lane, but he's also too far away. So we're just gonna we're just gonna farm. Yeah, it's honestly the right scenario for both teams. There is of course playmaking potential on unknown, and they have the space for that now. Um, but they know that their real win condition is the Dusa here. So as long as they don't expose her, they can they can just keep on farming. And Interatus is like, all right, fine, we're not gonna rock the boat here. We're not gonna remind you that we could be fighting in this game because our sniper would really rather get something else than just Dragonlance before he needs to get involved. Yeah, what would you get on the sniper here in this game? Hmm. Hard to say. Yeah, I mean, you already got the Mask of Madness, so you don't need Maelstrom here. If you did skip the Mask of Madness, then you would probably be looking at, like, Maelstrom with a casual Crystallis. You could then either build into Daedalus or, like, in this case, uh, Silver Edge, for example. That's what I was thinking about. So, Mask of Madness, the farming tool, even though you are single-targeting everything right now. Trade Protector is also getting single-targeted. Ember's currently drops the base on top of the Ember. And Rayor comes to the rescue, but is it going to be enough to take this Ember down? It is going to be the dead Ember here. He did not have mana to jump out with the Remnant. Trade kill from Moonlight. It's a slight relief. It's something. But uh, Ember didn't get his stick charges off, so he didn't get his remnant. A the bit, bit of an over engagement. Yeah, meanwhile in the Roche bit. Medusa going to work. Lads at the ready, army at the ready. The, the snowball from Unknown is gathering speed. It is, and uh, Medusa getting enabled earlier on is exactly the goal that we're looking for with this draft that they could not only just farm with this hero towards the late game, but actually be active in mid game because Storm Spirit, Mars, Rubik, these are all really good heroes with damage dealing and bursting and always finding kills. And then you have three of them put together. Uh, you're always going to lose two to three heroes in a team fight against Interitus. So if they have the potential of bringing up the Medusa uh, into speed, and they will take it. They're playing accordingly. Look at this positioning of the Medusa as well, like, she's the one in front, all by herself. Like, I think Argus mm -hmm. has been maybe a bit of out, out of position once or twice, but Interactors are afraid and they don't want to jump with that Medusa. They suspect no. ill. No, their, their damage is limited right now, it mostly comes from the Storm and the Mars. And both of them, once the mana pools are empty, you're not doing very much anymore. And if they yep. empty those oh. out on the Medusa, Sniper. they are toast. Sniper. Oh, dude, they just turned... They just turned around! Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, that would have been a perfect kill. That would have been the highest net worth hero to be caught by Unknown. Instead, the sniper gets to live a little bit longer. Where did he think they were? Yeah, you could say that's a very close call. Ember finds Mars. And they're going. They're going straight towards this triangle, stacking up a little bit. Uh, not the triangle, I mean the, the, the jungle. And Medusa leading the troops. Dyer's middle tower is being attacked. Yeah, this is a very desperate chase. Um, nice obstacle. are helping out. Here. Flash. Got a chance for an overgrowth there. Stacking around. Nice four man ulti. Spear connecting onto the back. They caught Rajor coming in with a jump onto Soul. They will take down one. They will take down two. And feeling also low on HP. But FCR with that Medusa's gaze, he's forced to turn around. And Medusa, despite the Aegis, despite the stick charges, just getting isolated and pushed away. They're toying with this Medusa right now, avoiding her from hitting any targets. They get a bit of damage onto the Rubik. They found a the Sniper once again. Moonlight still wants to hunt down the Sniper. It doesn't quite hit with the Swarm. Rayur wants to look for this Weaver. Medusa still holding her position on the high ground. And with the Orchid coming back up cooldown, Storm's going to find the kill. Make it free for Interitus. An unknown. They bite the dust. This is the issue that was present all the way in the draft, where if the Medusa gets stuck outside of the arena, sure, she's big and sure, she has the Aegis, but she doesn't actually do anything. Everything bounces harmlessly off of that ultimate. And I gotta say, there's no way the Emmer and the Beastmaster should have been on top of each other. That's both of the cores gone in the blink of an eye, and after that, Interatus can just peel the entire team fight apart. 
And that's kind of a it's kind of a shock warning for unknown too when they realize that team fight was Medusa just like I'm getting kited, I'm getting kited, can you guys bring me some target to hit? And then you're looking at your stuns, it's Ogre. And then you have the roar from the Beastmaster on one target with a very long cooldown. So Ogre with Fire Blast is kind of the MVP of this team because he's the only reliable stun in the team. It is, yes, and that, that roar never came out in a previous fight. It never did. Something that Unknown is going to have to re uh, kind of uh, reconsider again. How do they take these fights? But now, Mars is a Blink Dagger. Uh, for Interitus, they have four heroes. They Actually, sorry. Yeah, they have four heroes with control in their team. So for them, fighting is easier. As long as they kite the Medusa, don't get hit by stuns on targets that are about to be clumped up by unknown heroes. So if you see three guys approaching you and you get stunned, you're dead. So as long as that scenario is avoided and if that condition never gets filled, Intertis can still win team fights without losing any members. Like we just saw, we saw one hero die and that was just a, a train protector dropping a four-man ulti enabling the entire fight. So positioning is key again, but they have to keep they have to stay very mobile too on this Interitus lineup. They have to work around this Medusa, and she's going to make that harder. She's got the Daedalus queued up now. She realizes that right now she is ignorable. And this is the hard choice that you always have to make as a Medusa. Like, alright, do I build damage, which means I can be killed when they focus me? Or do I make sure that I am indomitable and I, I march forward and force them to deal with me? Um, and right now, as you see, as long as the Medusa is in position, it's actually very hard for Antiratus to engage, because they need those backliners first. Um, but she can't always be in that position, of course, and that's where the choice comes in. Oh. Right, you're hiding in the trees in the bottom lane, hoping for a potential uh, weaver to show up, maybe. I do like the lane ward placed down by Moonlight all the way in this uh, old bottom tier one's position. We'll reveal if somebody shows themselves in that lane. Closing up with the 20-minute marker. Uh, Medusa's situation right now is building a Scotty. Mm, switched up. So yeah, she wants stats. I think the slow is useful, yeah. And of course the HP region uh, reduction to make things easier. Because there's still a tree and protector. It's going to buff people up. And the rest of Unknown are smoking up... Radiant Scan has been used, and they just moved out of that circle, so they know somebody was Jar. there. And they see the Sniper, they see the Rubik. That lane ward might just pay off, but they go too deep in the trees. They find, they, find the, they find the Rubik. Do they find the Sniper? He walks past the Ancient Thunder Hide and everything of this Sniper. Is he going to get out unscathed? Because that's the target they wanted to go for. They've lost the Rubik. Medusa's also here. Hijack trying to position himself onto the Medusa. There's no Aegis remaining. Freyor goes for the top, but he finds an illusion on the Ember Spirit. That is not the real one. FCR located. <laughs> Moonlight knows exactly what to do with this sniper here. They're going to lose the Dream Protector in the trees. Oh, by the way, I almost swallowed my own tongue, so <laughs> that's not very advisable. Oh, but still, sniper gets out like... So close I, I, to catching the right target. He was right next to him as well. He still got out. They pumped out a first dust when they initially jumped, and FCR was out of reach of it by magic. Yeah. Really. He was he was pixels off units. And then the second time, of course, they guess wrong. He is no longer there. Well, that's your bottom tier one tower gone. Unknown, they're on full push right now. Could keep on going for the tier 2 tower with the Overlord unit there. That's the Spear and the Medusa, a bit of harassment damage there, but the Mars might have just sold his soul. Meanwhile, jumping onto the back line is the Storm Spirit trying to catch Benjaz. And they've caught Tree and Protector stun in the gaze. And look at the plays from Black Soul. Look at the way he jumps to the back line. He secures a triple kill, ultra kill, maybe even even the potential for a rampage, but looks like the sniper might just kill off the Ember Spirit. And it's the Mars who blinks in with the Spear Arena, catching the Ember, and feeling is about to go down too. At least they finish off the tower. But it was almost the perfect play from the Ember, catching those kills, but he still loses his life in the process. 
And this is Medusa demonstrating how hard it is to get past her because they, they really see none of the heroes are focusing her unless they're very sure that she's out of position. So the spear are back trying to bring her in. Unfortunately, this Mars gets caught and it sets up the situation where, yeah, he saves it afterwards, but that costs him a buyback. They don't have that option available next time. Solar Crest soon up for the Tree and Protector. Um, do you think this is the right choice here? Buffing up the Sniper here with buffs? Buffing the Sniper Absolutely. with buffs. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. They need more damage. You can see that the Dusa is acquiring HP and stats faster than they can do anything about. So, And she's going to continue in front. The other heroes, the Mars and the Storm, are going to have to get most of their plays from positioning anyway, not from the hard damage that they deal. So this is this is the best thing for the Triant to do, as well as that he can use a little bit of the extra uh, extra stats that you get out of it. Yeah, yeah. He's been dying so often. Ideally, of course, he buys a blink dagger eventually, but his team is not in a position right now where they can afford to have him split push somewhere and yeah. get that gold. For unknown, it feels like it's just free farming area here for the Arceus Medusa. 276 CS, hasn't been killed yet. 104, pretty decent uh, start, if you would say, for a Medusa here in this game. And now we see the Daedalus come up, which we already discussed earlier, that she wants the damage, she's going to get the damage, and she's going to give it to. Yep, and even in their farming position, they had the Medusa in the most dangerous forward position. Classic no. push with the wards, and it is Hijack going it's in first with the arena. spear, but the Mars, he's just getting instantly jumped on with the stuns. They make sure they get this kill. They've got the Beastmaster, but he's a pretty hard target too. And they've spent a lot of damage just taking down the Beastmaster. They do manage to find Feeling. He's going to come with a buyback. Sniper dropping low, rooted up with this Ember Spirit. And FCR dead means the end of the team fight. Yules as well to the Storm Spirit. No escape right now for Yor. Doesn't even get to the low ground. There's nowhere to go. But that Storm Spirit and an unknown finally score a victory in a team fight for themselves. And they take this one three to four with a buyback coming in from the Ogre. But most importantly, they were ready for it. It did lead them to having their smokes popped, but with the vision the Ogre gave with that ward placed down, even with Hijack jumping in, they weren't afraid. They were not, but they were very close to losing that fight. Soul on that Ember Spirit bounced off the walls twice because he was so desperate to get out of the arena, and that nearly got him killed, I think, with different targeting from New York. They could have brought him down, and then that fight looks very different. Because if the Ember doesn't come back at the end there, I don't think you clean up the Sniper that easy. No, I agree. Like, I think some things still uh, could go a bit better for both teams. The, the Beastmaster, for example, again, didn't get to use the Roar. Um, mm -hmm. Surprised them from the behind at least, but with that Blink Dagger, felt like he just blinked straight into a Silence slash Stun. I think Orchid was already uh, back off cooldown on, on the Storm Spirit. Or oh, then he didn't use it at all, but Beast basically jumped to his death in that case. And right now in mid, Arena plays down, and they will get feeling. Flash drops the ulti. He's got Benjaz. Now they got the Roar. But the Roar was just for a bit of saving on his allies. But Rayur still makes his way out. Anytime the Medusa is not the frontliner people die and i think you should see that as an illustration of how meticulously they've Dyer's been putting this medusa in the front line attacked. for the past 10 Rain minutes yeah. being attacked. almost nobody's died it's a plan that works they will stick to their guns still holding on to a 9k lead hijack finds a bird rip burb I mean, they have a Burb logo in their uh, their team. Mm -hmm. This BKB over on the Storm Spirit it might just change things around for Interitus. He still has to play careful of the Roar, but he's not going to be slowed up by this Ember Spirit or anything that the Ogre might throw at him anymore, so it's very freeing. Kind of don't want to have to buy a BKB as a Storm Spirit. You'd really rather just have a free game. But mm -hmm. this is the next best thing. 
that's also kind of an interesting factor too because now that i'm thinking about the how the roar and the bkb both come into the big picture oh well, if you die if you jump in too deep and you get roared it's counteractive but now the beastmaster could still be doing the same thing of trying to jump the back line try to flank from the side with the blink and look for the roar target if that was Storm Spirit all along, the, by the time he's jumped the back line, uh, Storm could just disappear and go for somebody else with that BKB and just go full ham. Meanwhile, Mars is getting roared up, so that's going to be a kill for Unknown. Embers will give for more. Uh, I think he caught a glimpse of the Storm Spirit. He sees the direction he's been going, but he's already TP'd out. Radiant's top tower is under siege. I think this poor Rubik. He really wanted to throw one more Fade Bolt, nearly loses his life for it. Yeah, just, just one more, please. Can I have some creeps, sir? May I? Medusa's now got the status of the damage she deals. And did Sniper just reveal some vision? Wait, that was actually the shrapnel, never mind. Oh, uh, there is actually a ward. Okay, yeah, so they did reveal the ward <laughs> placement there. Hmm. There's also been another interesting decision made. When the Roshan died, the shard was first given to the ogre. And I thought, oh yeah, the fire shield, that makes sense for the Dusa. But in the end, she doesn't really need it. So instead, the weaver over here has the shard. And they're going to be using this to hunt down that Indus sniper with. Yep, silver edge countered by a shard. You built this very expensive item for several thousand gold, only to be countered by an item Roshan drops every time. Roshan is a bit uh, bit strong sometimes. I think uh, I think somebody should talk to Icefrog about that. That's it. It's not fully countered. You still do quite countered. a lot of damage. I think that's also kind of the enjoyment of when it comes to drafts and the importance of Roshan is when you when you pick a specific type of draft and you have the capability of one contesting Roshan two taking it for yourselves. Um, that shard can be like a huge power spike for your team. Say Ursa, for example. Uh, while Pyjack actually does go in with the spear, never gets thrown out. Finally connects it onto the Medusa. Completely empty mana pool. Beastmaster got the roar out, to but her. will lose his life with it. Both offlaners being killed. The silence onto the Ember Spirit, but he's got his BKB. Will be able to evade for now. Disengaging from the base of Interitus. Risky place from Arceus there. A, he stands until his entire mana pool is empty. A lot of people would have already been like, "Hey, Medusa, 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 Medusa!" Like, when you're when you don't have the mana, you're inside the arena like that. None of of the projectiles are actually flying out. Might have been the reason why they did not jump the Medusa because she was uh, ineffective for the duration of the arena mm, being up. Yep, and ideally you take down other targets still, uh, especially since she's trying to get out and running away. Um, because, of course, if she returns with full health and mana, the problem has been... Well, you've reset your problem, basically. Yeah, Ooh, feeling was looking for the stun on the Storm Spirit, but he is able to move out. Meanwhile, three-man smoke from Interitus, uh, moving inside their own jungle, going for a bit of a wraparound, potentially getting some wards, some vision down. Knowing that this next Roshan has to be fought against uh, Unknown outside of the base. So they can't wait for Unknown to pick up Roshan again. And look at this setup here. Look at the map. We've got five people approaching the Medusa with no Aegis, with no way to protect herself. And that is a dead Arceus. And this opens up everything for Interitus hunting down this ogre. Feeling it does not feel too good for him. And two kills go in the way of Interitus. A bit of a pause from feeling too, as he has also disconnected. Doesn't really matter, he was dead anyway. But the Medusa all by herself, just like that? This is a repeat from game number one, Kips. It does feel like that, doesn't it? I mean, she, she doesn't have an Aegis anymore. It just timed out. She walks into that jungle, maybe expecting her team to be behind her, like they have been for the past 20 minutes, but they're, they're not anymore. Anybody, everybody got used to her being completely invincible, so she saunters up there, expecting the peasants to make way. And the peasants say, hey, <laughs> that's a nice hat you got. <laughs> Mind if we... Ah... <sighs>
you give a couple more kills like this, you're uh, allowing this dire team back into the game. Yep, you might. I mean, this this sniper still has a long way to go, but you still don't quite have the tools to take him down, as we saw from the previous fight, where if you jump to sniper, what happens is that the Mars comes at you and isolates whoever jumped, and then the Medusa can't help them while they get killed. Yep. Well, even if, even if this sniper did get back into the game it's not like a huge relief you're still playing up against the medusa but your high ground defense gets so much better with a uh, six slotted sniper because he's he's great against megas uh he is also one of the better um maelstrom carriers if you still want to change your item build by sending them the mask of madness into a maelstrom um if you're in the situation of mega creeps great attack strength uh, great attack range great damage uh, builds up into some pretty decent stats too. So even with the Beastmaster Roar, Medusa's not necessarily close enough to hit the sniper. She's got a lot of distance to tread in between. And Inheritors will never let you do that if you're a Medusa. You'll never get to hit the sniper unless the sniper is mispositioned when the, the roar comes out. And if we've seen anything from FCR this game is that his positioning is risky, but on exactly on the right side of the line. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's it's enough to bait them in, but it's enough to keep them alive. And I think that's a sign of a good carry player, too, that you know your limits. You understand your mm -hmm. limits. Arceus isn't really showing that with this Medusa, to be honest. Uh, a couple mishaps here and there, maybe a bit of lack of focus. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to, you know blame a player for it but i feel like what we've seen in this these past two games it's it's a potential win factor for interitus if they catch this this medusa Bottom off guard once or twice because she's already done it a few times so far and they are coming they're up with this again. aggressive Both smoke and i like the move they're doing but uh shame mm -hmm. does not detect anything far. yeah in, in a second they're gonna realize that something's up why is nobody pushing these waves? Why is nobody defending the base right now? Unknown already had an idea. They placed themselves behind the tier 2 towers. Moonlight reveals himself. FCR knows the location of the Weaver, but how do you catch this Weaver? You've got a sentry with the Trium Protector, and Cypher's gonna continue chasing for a little bit longer. But there's the TP out, so he's out. So no harm, no foul, and a BKB now ready on the Medusa. That's going to finally help her walk either in or out of these arenas when they are containing her team. Yep, allows you to stand your ground a bit further, a bit longer. Um, the lack of stuns on Interitus, they're going to have to start targeting Medusa in a whole different way. If they initiate and the BKB is still up on the Medusa, they would have to put a lot... They would have to chain stun this Medusa. So I feel like they have to wait the BKB first and play what happens after so their items get into effect. Like the Orchids, yep. for example. Key item here will be this Blink Dagger over on the Trent Protector. He's nearly there. It will cost him his opportunity to buy back, so it's very risky for him to actually purchase it. Yeah. But what we've seen so far is that this Trent needs to die in order to get into position to get a good overgrowth off. That will no longer be the case, and in fact, he will be able to blink in and immobilize the Medusa if she ever pops her BKB and starts chasing people. Mm. She does have two ways of getting out of it, but at least you know you are trading an ability for one of those, either the Manta or the BKB. Plus, you're catching other heroes uh, as collateral, so that's what the Triant is looking for. As much chaos as possible that they can sow into unknown. Boars are getting vision right now, but Benja's not going for the jump yet, thinking about it. Poor Granite Golem stuck on the cliff. He's king of the hill, literally. He's not giving his place so <laughs> No way of getting him off. I, is, is this a new contender for Arteezy? Um, possibly. I mean, they have roughly the same posture. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, um, into the pit. It is the Medusa dealing a decent amount of damage here with the Solar Crest debuffing Roshan's armor. But Interitus, do they read this play or not? Because Rosh is already down. They're thinking about positioning here, but they're not taking the they're not taking the fight to the pit. We talked about the importance of this next Roshan. Uh, 
it's just gonna it's just gonna slide away. And the cheese is in the pit. You're giving up without a fight. Who who needs the cheese, right? You can get all of these beautiful passive items. I feel like that is one of the reasons that people forget the cheese so often these days, is that compared to everything else, it just doesn't do as much. Yeah, goddamn lactose intolerance these days. Including myself. <laughs> well, I'm not exactly, but... Uh, sucks, least, dude. It's, it sucks. It sucks for sure. Is being attacked. I'm just cow Dyer's milk allergic. Are under it's a bit different. Mm, they've cut the wave over on Interitus here, but it doesn't mean a lot when there's still a catapult next to that Medusa, who is knocking down your barracks as we speak. Having fun with this uh, melee racks being sieged up. Spear into Argus, pushed away with the bulk. Mana pool almost completely depleted. Still have Mr. Gaze, Maywan Ragur, jumping on the back line, getting a bit of damage onto the Weaver, and Weaver actually dies in the end. And the thing that actually killed her is the Nature's Grasp. So Weaver out. Five versus four, still potential Ooh, here from Tertus. Yeah, Hijack is just soaking every hit right now. Pops his BKP. Arceus and Soul can't do much to him. And D-Flash, he still has that ulti, plus his blink in the fountain. I must have them all. Not getting to use his courier, at least for now. So, uh, ulti still available. And unknown, they know about it. But there's also still a roar on his Beastmaster. Oh, Rubik's getting jumped on and Yeah, that's a that's a quick kill. Uh, that's a quick kill. Look at this positioning from Inderitus here. They have no intention of meeting the Medusa at their racks again. They were trying to once again come from the back. Unknown will not let them. Yeah, it, it, even if they don't kill the Medusa, at least burn her entire mana pool. Make her vulnerable. Make her feel vulnerable. So that could slow down Unknown's push. Everything exactly. that they can deal is always always towards home. And don't get to see this too often, but there's a Crimson Guard being built on the Mars just because of the split shot arrows from the Medusa. Argus is now making her way towards the high ground and should finish off the melee racks in mid. Hijack, look for the angle here. Thinking about it. Actually just throws the spear into Medusa, kills the Crete wave. That should be it, pretty much unknown. They're happy to take the buildings down without losing any of their heroes, so they will continue going with this. That sniper high ground defense really kicking in. This man has a Daedalus now. And he's still as hard to take down as ever. And at some point in the near future, he's going to have the level 25 talent as well. 100 extra attack range. He's going to be absolutely impossible to reach. Jazz getting buffed up by Bloodlust, 480 movement speed, they almost catch the storm. Suicidal Bird connects with the stun and almost allowing the Beastmaster to blink in with the roar. Sadly too far away in distance. So if they killed the Storm Spirit, that could be a ticket onto high ground. Still, the sniper factor is there, like you said. Uh, FCR with the sniper is scary. <laughs> The one who could break his wide open his soul on his inner spirit. He's got a refresher shard. He's got the BKB and the Ags. He is fully loaded right now. And he is the man who could. Kill Jack goes and misses the spear heroes. this time. Doesn't connect, oh, no. and that's gonna be a dead Mars. Roar is used too, and doesn't look like this Mars is gonna be coming back unless used with a buyback. And they've caught the Rubik once again. Ember Spirit catching the front back line. Does get the overgrowth. Yules is there to cancel that. Hi, Jack. Blink has been cancelled, has the arena, has the spear. They want to blow up this Medusa on the first try. And there's the arena, isolating the Medusa. Medusa versus four, but they can't deal with this Medusa, except for FCR. It's under the sniper ult onto the back one. There's a bit of damage on the Weaver, not enough for a kill though. So, he gets saved for a second. He's still making work, he kills off the Mars. Mars with a dieback, Rubik in the trees, TP's away. The melee racks is down, so unknown. They make quick work of this, and they make sure that they do not fail this push. As long as they're a unit, they can win this. And now the Beastmaster getting orchided up. He's going to die to the buffs. The buffs in this case, and Argus charges in with the gaze, and the stun is there, and FCR is down. The sniper's been killed. And another one with the tree and protector falling. Unknown. Looks like they've done it. Finally breaking through at... Important factors in that fight, 
time lapse from the Weaver, causing them to have to put that much more energy into the Medusa. And in the meantime, indeed, the Ember Spirit murdering the entire backline of Interitus. Yep. It is a really hard defense now. Buybacks have been used, still four versus four. Make that four versus three because the train protector is dead. And please, they get the return kill on the ogre. Rayur trying to catch the Medusa. Medusa still has her BKB. Another time lapse and an ultra kill for Argus. They're going to get the rampage. They're going to make sure they get it. And there we have it. A rampage out of all things. And we are going to game number three. So no two O's here. Please. Yes. And this, this one was very well executed by Unknown. You can see throughout this entire game the difficulties that they have to play around. They have all of the tools in their own hand. You go from the Beastmaster to the Ember Spirit to the to the Dusa, and actually into the Dusa as the main uh, focal point of the game way earlier than I thought, but they're completely correct to do it because you can see how Interitus throughout this game is just trying to solve the puzzle of having to go past that Medusa and having to give up too much in order to do that. Yeah, like they they planned it out. They actually got to play the game they wanted to with uh, we were discussing in the draft about the buffs, the playmaking. Medusa getting such a great lane too. Like I, mm -hmm. I feel like something might have maybe either gone wrong with the Mars Rubik, or then they just simply could not contest with the uh, the ogre pushing them out of the lane, forcing to pick up that early point in Bulwark. Really mitigated the kill potential with this 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 marks and obviously the mars rubik forced to run away most of the time snake hurts a lot um should they have maybe asked for help from the train protector to get like a rotation very rarely do you actually get to see that support rotation into the side lane to make it a three versus two scenario you very rarely do that anymore these days but i think that might have been the option for it try to get the medusa out of position and then to get the TP rotation to push in with three because you have the damage for it. But Medusa just got such a free lane, which basically just told the whole story of this game in the end that if Medusa gets a good lane, gets online early, it you can almost start to uh, think about tapping out. Yeah, I think the Mars Rubik lane should be able to play that one more aggressively. Um, maybe you need to pull a wave here and there, put the Medusa under a tower, guarantee a level three. Um, and then try to go for kills. Because if you trade versus this lane, like was happening here, then yeah, it mostly ended with uh, both Hijack as well as Pipolio just running away. And things sort of snowball from there because Damars doesn't need to be the playmaker in this game. He only gets his first arena off at 11 minutes um, on, on a yeah. solo Ogre. And that sort of sets the tone for how much they're running after Unknown. And Unknown, in the meantime, is not busy stopping Interitus from anything. They're just achieving their own goals. And they did that very well this game. Yeah. So if both teams have learned enough from both these first <laughs> two games, then this third game might just be a banger. Well, we're going to have to wait a bit. Uh, I think we're not going to have to wait too long for game number three. But we shall still uh, drop by a little ad break. And we shall return with Unknown versus Interitus game number three. 